Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about the 1997 World's Fastest Man Race. Now this race was held in the Toronto Sky Dome in 1997 and it was a race between a Canadian 100 meter champion and the American 200 meter Olympic champion to see who was truly the world's fastest man. Now there was a huge media storm prior to this race as it was a really big kind of competition and rivalry between the two men and this was all caused by an American sportscaster, a historical rivalry and some really big, like really really big egos. Now I'm going to start with some background history that starts at the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games. Now at this Games, Canadian sprinter Donovan Bailey won the 100 meter sprint and set a new world record in the event with a time of 9.84. Now also at this Games, America's Michael Johnson won both the 200 and 400 meter sprints with a new world record in the 200 with a time of 19.32. Now, America and Canada also faced off in the four times 100 relay where Canada pulled through, beat the states in a kind of a little bit of an upset, and also in this race, Bailey anchored. Now, normally, even today, whoever wins the 100 meters is considered the world's fastest man for that kind of time period, or until someone else comes along is a little bit faster and beats them. In Bolt today is considered the fastest man alive, also the fastest man in the world because he has the current world record in the 100 meter sprint. So after Canada's Donovan Bailey wins the 100 meters, he should be considered the world's fastest man. However, an American sportscaster by the name of Bob Costa decided this, this wasn't actually the case. Costa, who was a sportscaster for NBC, claimed Johnson was actually the world's fastest man. Now, he claims this... Um, he obviously doesn't have a degree in math because he did some really bad math in order to claim that Johnson was actually now the world's fastest man. So what he did is he took um, Michael Johnson's world record time of 19.32, divided it in half to get a time of 9.66, which he said was faster than Bailey's world record of 9.84. Basically, he just took a time, divided it in half, and said, actually, Michael Johnson is way faster than Donovan Bailey. For, to most people who know anything about track or anything really about math for that matter, would know that the second leg of a 200 meter is always gonna be faster than the first leg. This is because they're literally already hitting the ground running. So there is no start, there's no getting into your stride, and you're probably at your fastest pace already by that point. So you're going to be going faster. If Donovan Bailey also did a 200 meter, his second 100 would have also been faster probably than his first 100. So also to further disprove this point, if you look at Johnson's time of 19.32, he runs 10.32 meters per second. But if you look at Donovan Bailey's time of 9.84, he actually runs 10.16 meters per second, which is ultimately faster. Now, of course, like American media is. As soon as Costa said this, the comments were picked up and distributed far and wide across America, all over American newspapers and into sportscasters. They also claimed that because this man said it, it was true. So there was surprisingly a lot of American media and Americans who just kind of fell behind this state, completely ignoring that Donovan Bailey had actually just set a brand new world record. Basically they just, oh no, actually, Johnson would be way faster in a race than Bailey. He was actually faster in 200 meters, so now he's the world's fastest man. Um, but Tommy Bailey kind of caught on uh, pretty quick to this. Bailey said of Costa that he was a person who knew nothing about track and was just talking about it with a lot of people listening, essentially telling him that he's misinforming the public, which, I mean, he was. Um, now, Bailey also had a lot of issues with the American media who just completely ignored that he was actually the world's fastest man at that time. Now, he wasn't just mad at Costa and the American media, but was also mad at Michael Johnson. Now, Johnson had taken this new fake uh, undeserved and ran with it and it actually appeared in a few ads that he did particularly with Nike which claimed that he was actually the world's fastest man. Now a lot of Canada was also pretty upset with this as well also consider that we had a little bit of a fib a few years earlier in the 100 meter which I'll also be mentioning shortly. In Johnson's hometown 
the hometown of Bailey actually took out ads in the local newspapers claiming that Donovan Bailey was actually the world's fastest man. This big kind of debacle, there was also a lot of back and forth between the two athletes themselves, kind of both medias and within the both of the countries. They both just really despised each other on these issues for this one. Why was this kind of such a big deal at this time? Well, there's actually a history of a Canadian and American sports rivalry in the 100 meters, which happened about 10 years prior, which is probably why it was such a big deal. Now, 10 years earlier, American Carl Lewis and Canada's Ben Johnson competed in the 100 meters and kind of started to develop a friendly competition in 1985. Both had beaten each other a few times and towards the 1987 World Championships, Canadian Canada's Johnson um, had begun to get just a little bit faster than Carl Lewis um, and this led to Ben Johnson winning the 100 meters with Carl Lewis coming in second. Now Lewis claimed after this race that Johnson had to have been on drugs because there's no way he could have beat him. He had to have been on drugs. Unfortunately, he's probably, he's probably right at this point, but we don't know this yet. So he had to be taking drugs. Also, he claimed that uh, Ben Johnson had false started, and also he claimed himself that he was sick, so that's why he didn't win. Yada, 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 excuses, excuses, excuses. So this obviously caused a lot of tension between the two racers, and a lot of the American and Canadian sports media who were covering the kind of rivalry between the two of them at the time. So a year later, at the 1988 Seoul Olympics, the 100 meters is and kind of was the biggest event of the year, especially with this big rivalry between Canada and America. Now, of course, there was tons of news coverage covering this event to see who was going to be the world's fastest man of the 1988 Olympics. Canadian Ben Johnson would win the 100 meters in a not so close race and actually set a new world record. And American Carl Lewis came in second. Then, it hit the fan, basically. So six days later, Ben Johnson is discovered to have been taking testosterone and having steroids in his system and is stripped of his medals and his world record. The International Olympic Committee essentially moved all the standings. So now that Carl Lewis was the champion of the 100 meters of the 1988 uh, Olympic Games and thus the world's fastest man at the time. So this American and Canadian rivalry at the time, um, because of the whole Johnson-Lewis kind of rivalry, big ego debacle thing, um, and fast forward 10 years uh, earlier in 1996, it was kind of looking like it was going to be a very similar race, a very similar event to what happened at the 1988 games. They thought history was maybe going to kind of repeat itself. So after the 1996 Atlanta Olympics, the whole media storm kicks off to determine who is really the world's fastest man, even though it's not that difficult to figure all that out. And of course, it kicks off between the two athletes themselves. They get into yelling matches at tournaments, media groups trying to ha start to trying to hypothesize and get in specialists and stuff to talk about whether or not it's possible that Michael uh, Johnson can beat Donovan Bailey in a race, whether or not he's actually the fastest man. Actually, People come up with a brilliant idea. Why don't we just pit them together in a race to see who is truly the world's fastest man? So this accumulates into the creation of the world's fastest man race that was on June 1st, 1997. The event was to be held in the Toronto Sky Dome. So both athletes were given $500,000 just to show up and race, and a million dollars was going to be given to whomever won. Now, the track situation was pretty messed up. They went with a 100 meter race, which was the middle of the two of their specializations. Donovan Bailey with the 100, Michael Johnson with the 200. And what they also did is they had um, on the track a 75 meter straightaway and a 75 meter bend to incorporate the turns that you take in a 200 meter and to also incorporate the just straight 100 meter dash that you have in the 100 meter. Now, they were trying to make it as equal as possible for both athletes, which ended up in a very weird track that, of course, neither athlete actually liked. And nor had they ever trained or ran on a course that was quite like that one as well. So, I mean, it wasn't starting off very well. well they were kind of having, having arguments with one another about who was going to be on the inside, who was going to be on the outside. Um, Johnson thought that he'd be running more on the outside, so they had to stagger the start. 
Um, Jonathan Bailey absolutely hated the length of the track and thought it was so dumb. Why couldn't they just have straight away 100 meter? All that sort of stuff. So even before the race, the two of them were bickering with one another. During a kind of pre-race conference with reporters, uh, Johnson held on to his claim that he was actually the world's fastest man on earth. Bailey ranted about American media trying to take his title away, make him something that he wasn't, and reminded everyone that he actually won the 100 meter and he also won as part of the relay team in the 4 times uh, 100 meter uh, event, which are two of the fastest events at the games. 30,000 people showed up to watch the race with about 2.5 million Canadians watching on CBC. It also was broadcast to about 54 other countries. Now before the race there were some kind of appetizing dueling events of like pole vaulting, long jump, just kind of stuff to get you warmed up and ready for this big event that was going to be happening that would literally last like 10 seconds. Now as they headed to the start of the track, neither one of them looked at one another and if it was they were scowling, probably thinking of some really bad things to say to one another. but. Okay. Once out of the gate, they get out about the same time. Eventually, Bailey takes a slight lead with Johnson falling a high, just a couple, like, a couple steps, but then it became about a meter, and with about 40 meters to go, Johnson just stops on the track. Bailey looks back just as he crosses the finish line, but Johnson had, the, at this time, it stopped running, and with that, Bailey continued and crossed the finish line with a time of 14.99. Donovan Bailey was now the world's fastest man. His 100 meter dash win and this 150 meter race proved that he was actually the fastest man. After the race, Johnson had actually sprained his quadricep while running and Bailey, of course, with a lot of adrenaline and stuff going on, he's super excited that he won, he beat him, he called him a chicken, essentially saying that he was scared to lose and that they needed to run the race again. Now, of course, Johnson wasn't super happy about that comment and remarked on the type of man Bailey was. Now, would Johnson have won if he hadn't been injured? More or likely not. Bailey had about a meter uh, lead in front of Johnson when Johnson um, went down with his injury, and Bailey actually only got faster as he went. So, more than likely, Bailey would have won if still would have won if Johnson had actually finished the race. It's been a lot more closer and a lot more exciting, but inevitably, I think Bailey would have won. After the event, Bailey has stated that, of course, it was a big heated battle of testosterone, and it's kind of sorry for what he said about Johnson calling him a chicken in his post-race interview, and both of them have kind of chilled out about the race and about everything. But they never had that rematch, so Donovan Bailey took home a million dollar paycheck as well, which is always very exciting. Now, since that race, Johnson stopped claiming to be the world's fastest man, particularly after American Maurice Green beat Bailey's world record in 1999, only like two years later. His injury also lasts a while and he would not compete for a few more months. Donovan Bailey would continue to compete and eventually retire. And with that, that is the 1997 World's Fastest Man event with Canadian Donovan Bailey succeeding in being the world's fastest man and redeeming Canada after Ben Johnson did his, did his thing there. Now there's never really been another race like this because I think after this race a lot of people realize that yes, the person who wins the 100 meter is the world's fastest man and then Usain Bolt came along and everyone's like, yes, he's the world's fastest man. Now, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you have any other sport Olympic history things you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. And if you do like these videos, please subscribe. I post every two weeks, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye. But he, Michael Jordan, <laughs> Michael Johnson, Johnson, Michael, he's not Michael Jordan, he's Michael Johnson. My not Jordan. Michael Jordan didn't even run. Well, he played basketball and they're white, they're like, why we don't, why, why we, why, and not Michael Jordan, not Jordan Johnson.